tomorrow good afternoon learners La last class we discussed about the uh, producers post also poster also quant curve and maximization of output for a given post today we discuss about that the producer maximize output for a given post only when the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is equal to the ratio of the price of labor to the price of capital that means mrps lk equal to w by r or mpl by mpk marginal productivity of labor by marginal productivity of capital then minimization of cost for a given level of output in this case also the producer got its optimal combination situation if a producer seeks to minimize the cost of producing a given amount of output rather than maximizing output for a stipulated cost the condition of his equilibrium remains formally the same that is the marginal rate of technical substitution must be equal to the sector price ratio this can be easily easily uh, easily understood to a diagram we have a in the diagram 10 8.12 we have a single ic pan p which denotes the desired level of output but there is a set of isopost lines represent various levels of total cost outlay an isopost line closer to origin indicates that a lower total cost and the isopost lines parallel and thus have the same slope because they have been drawn on the assumption of constant prices of factors then isopost line k1 l1 is just not relevant because the output level represented by the isopost isopost p is not producible by any factor combination available on this isopost line the p level output can be produced by the factor combination presented by the points a and g which are on isopost line k3 l3 the producer can attain the p level output by the factor combination represented by the point e which is an isopost line k2 l2 since the isopost line k2 l2 is closer to the origin as compared to the isopost line k3 l3 it represents that k2 l2 is the relatively lower cost therefore by moving either from f to e or from g to e the producer attains the same output level at lower cost so the producer minimizes its cost by employing ob amount of capital and oa amount of labor so the uh, the producer is optimal at point e where he find that there is a lower cost compared to then k3 l3 p points above e represent higher cost and hence point e denotes the which cost combination of the factors and thus the thus in the case of producer equilibrium the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital must be equal to the ratio of the price of labor to the price of capital so from this situation we know that the optimal combination of factors are whether the producer seeks to maximize output for a given or he wishes to minimize cost for a for a output with that where mrps and the factor price ratio are equal that means mrps lk equal to mpl by mpk second condition is that the producer is in equilibrium when there is optimal combination of factors then the expansion phase expansion part what do you mean by expansion part producer expand their outputs both in long run and in the short run in the long run output extends with all factors variable 
while while in the short run expansion of output is possible with, with some factors constant and some others variable but in the firm's goal being maximization of its profits it seeks to expand outputs in the optimal way with given factor prices the optimal expansion path is the locus of the points of tendency of successive isoquest lines and successive isoquants it can be drawn through a diagram in the diagram 8.13 the factor price there is given the factor prices the output corresponding to isoquant p was producible at the lowest cost at point a where isoquest line a1 l1 is tangent to the isoquest isoquant p1 this is the initial position of producer equilibrium assuming that factor prices remain constant suppose the producer decide to expand output to the level indicated by the isoquant p2 this will be just to expand output to the level indicated by the isoquant p2 this will cause a shift in the isoquest line from one l1 to k to l2 the new equilibrium is found at point b where isoquest line a to l2 is tangent to the isoquest p2 further expansion in output to the level corresponding to isoquest point p3 will shift equilibrium to point c where isoquest line is k3 l3 and the tangent isoquant is p3 when we connecting all points of producer equilibrium then we got a curve that is expansion path then it may be recall that each point of producer equilibrium is defined by equality between the marginal rate of technical substitution and the factor price ratio so in the when since the latter has been assumed to remain constant the former also remains constant hence oe each oe each an isoclin along with output expands when factor prices remains constant in the case of linear homogeneous production function the isoclins are straight lines through the origin therefore the expansion path will also be a straight line this means that given the prices of the factors of production the optimal proportion of the inputs of the farm will not the size of the farm's output or input budget so in the in case of the linear homogeneous production function the isoclin line is linear line and which is like straight line then optimal expansion path in the short run we know that in the long run all factors of production are in variable composition but in short run capital is a fixed factor and that its amount remains constant labor is variable and the producer can expand its output by increasing the amount of labor only and which is straight line parallel to the x the axis on which this factor is measured so it is a, in the figure 8.15 the straight line ab indicates expansion path at the total amount of capital is fixed and at oa in the short run but the labor is labor which is measured in the ox axis it can be increased with the prices of factors of production remaining constant the farm cannot maximize its profit while it expands its output in the short run on account of the constant of the fixed amount of capital so the farm's initial equilibrium is at point e we are isoquest line a1 l1 is tangent to the isoquant p1 if the farm wishes to raise the output level corresponding to isoquant p2 it reaches the point a which given the factor prices is not the least cost situation if further extension of output to the level to the isoquant p3 leads the farm to reach the point g where which again does not represent the least cost situation so 
the optimal expansion path would be O R, where it was where it possible for the firm to increase the quantity of capital. However, given the amount of capital, the firm has no choice but to expand along the straight line, A B in the straight line, A, A B on the short line. So, in the short run case, the when capital is fixed, that time labor cannot on labor cannot give him the maximum maximize in profit. So that only in the, in the case of A B, which is a capital fixed curve, which is parallel to O axis, can they can can the firm can only going along with this curve. Then returns to scale. What is returns to scale? There are three phases of production: increasing return to scale, constant return to scale, and diminishing return to scale. Expansion of scale confirms a number of economic or advantages on the part, both internal and external. So, return to scale is three types: there is increasing return to scale, scale. Constant returns to scale and diminishing returns to scale. When all the factors of production are increased in the conditions of constant techniques, these they are the possible arise. Output increases in a greater proportion as compared to the increase in the factors of production, that is, increasing returns to scale. Output increases in the same proportion as the increase in the amount of factors of production. That is constant return to scale. If output increases in a smaller proportion as compared to the increase in, in the amount of the factors of production, that is diminishing return to scale. This this three possibility can be explained with with the out, yeah, schedule output schedule. One is first output schedule is give at the increasing, then out. Second one is the constant return scale, and third one is the diminishing return scale. So, in this schedule, we can find that when input X is engaged in production, input o, input Y is four in it. In, in, input X two in it, input is four Y is four in it, and the changes in the percentage changes in it, out input is hundred percent, output is thousand. Then in case of the second situation, input x is four, input y is eight. At the time is then there is double on this case, and output is three thousand. Then it is double, but the output is changes in ten thousand. Like that, it is increasing mode of production. Like constant production also, the percentage change in output is. Is hundred percent that is constant in nature, and like that in third output schedule we find that the what happen in first case the the percentage change is eighty second in third case it is come to diminish diminish and come to the thirty nine percent and in fourth case it is diminish again diminishes and it come to the twenty percent it is diminishing returns to scale. Increasing return scale when the ratio between the factors of production is kept fixed and the scale is expanded. Initially, output increases in a greater proportion than the increase in the factors of production. That is increasing return scale. For example, if factors are double, the output is more than double. To double the quantity of the output, it is not necessary to double the quantity of the factors of production. That means, in the figure, it can be explained with, with a figure 9.1. In this figure, figure P1, P2, P3, P3 and P4 are isoforms. They show 10, 20, 30, 40 units of output. OAS is the scale line which cut the Isoforms at unequal distance in the figure. It can be seen that CD is less than BC, then less than AB, then less than OA. That means O is greater than AB, greater than BC, 
rather than CD. This means that to enable the farm to rise from isoquant P2 to P, P1 to P2, the amount of factors of production required is less than the amount required to produce the initial 10 units of output. So, this way, first, initially, it, it can be increased in the double manner or more than the factors of production and so that it is called as the increasing returns to scale. Increasing returns to, returns to scale is happen or three main factors influenced by mainly the three factors in the past indivisibility. Indivisibility means factors of production is there. There is a certain minimum size of the factor. And even if it is large in relation to the size of output, it, it has to be used. So it cannot be divisible for a small quantity of output. So when the scale of production is enlarged initially, there is no equiproportional increase in the demand for the factors of production. Here we here the, the divisible thing is not possible. For that, initially the production is increased. Then specialization. Specialization means according to Chamberlain, the main reason of increasing returns to scale is specialization. When due to division of labor, workers are given jobs according to their ability, their productivity increases while cost declines. So, the importance of specialization can be accepted only if you assume that although an increase by an equal amount in quantity of labor and capital employed is necessary for, for an expansion in scale. Increase does not remain does not mean the doubling or trebling their units employed, but it does not mean an increase in their fixed money cost. But this can lead to technical changes, and it is very much possible that increasing returns emerge not due to due to an expansion in scale, but due to technical reasons. Then constant returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale can be obtained only up to a point. After this point. It reach expansion of scale only leads to, a, to equal proportional change in output. In constant returns to scale implies that when the, the quantity of the factors of production is increased, in such a way that the ratio of the factors remain unchanged. Output increases in the same proportion in which the factors are increased. That means when the quantity of the factors is doubled, the output also doubles. Such a production function is often called linear homogeneous production function. This phase of constant return to scale can be understood with the help of a diagram. In this diagram, when the farm goes from isoquant P3 to P4, or from isoquant P4 to P5, or from isoquant P5 to P6, constant return to scale are obtained. The here, CD equal to DE equal to EF on the table I indicate this, this phenomenon. Generally, when inefficiently of production on a small scale are overcome and or no problems regarding technical and managerial indivisibility, in, indivisibility remain, expansion in scale leads to situation where returns increases in the same proportion as the factors of production. So that at that time, constant returns to scale same. Economists have argued that if the factors of production are perfectly divisible, this the production function must exhibit constant returns to scale. If constant returns to scale does not prevail in some industry, it is because in these industries, either due to scarcity or indivisibility of some factors. It is not possible to vary all, all them in the same proportion. Individ, indivisibility of a factor often results in its underutilization at lower levels of output levels. So that the 
constant returns the output can be increased or decreased by increasing or decreasing the amounts of the capitals in the optimum proportion without any economics or diseconomics of scale which means that constant returns to scale will necessarily prevail then diminishing returns to scale diminishing returns to scale ensure that the size of the productive farms cannot be infinitely large after a limit when the quantity of the factors of production is increased in such a way that the proportion of the factors remain unchanged output increase in smaller proportion as compared to increases in the amount of the factors of production so the economics do not if this this can happen with, with because of two reasons past enterprise so economists uh, emphasize that enterprise is a constant and indivisible factor of production and its supply cannot be increased even if the long run accordingly when the quantity of other factors is increased and the scale of production expanded in a bid to boost up production the proportion of other factors in relation to enterprise increases beyond a certain point this results in diminishing returns as enterprise become scarce in relation to other factors then managerial difficulties the main reason for the operation of diminishing returns scale is managerial difficulties when the scale of production expands the coordination and control on different factors of production tend to become weak and therefore output fails to increase in the same proportion as the factors of production increase this results in diminishing returns to scale then their expansion of the scale confirms a number of economic on the farm so these economies are economies are obtained in production work marketing management transport extra are in the real terms while economics that are obtained in terms of purchase or purchase or inputs at wholesale rate availability of finance at lower rate of interest saving on advertising costs are in money terms then there are certain economy do not equal to the farm which scale of operation is large but equal to certain other farms which benefit from the large scale of this farm so internal economics of scale when the scale of production is enlarged the farm replaces a small plant by larger plant this increases the efficiency of production it is not always necessary to change the plant for expanding the scale of production the farm can keep the old plant in a running condition and either establish a new plant of the same type or a new plant of some new type in all the alternatives the farm of this many different kinds of economies then real economies real internal economies of scale when expansion in the scale of production and takes place the farm obtain some real internal economies then each economy is acquired in the form of saving in the physical quantity of raw materials labor fixed and variable capital and other inputs so real internal economies are are production economics selling or marketing economics managerial economics economies in transport and storage production economics when the scale of production expands a number of of economies equal to the farm in the production processes itself as opportunities for obtaining various types of economic emerge in the workshop of the factory production on a large scale enables the farm to carry out extensive division of labor and employ large automatic machines then the capacity of the machine is also fully used on account of the large volume of production then techniques of production are changing so rapidly in the modern world that every producer has to remain ever alert large size of the farm and large size of the operation is distinctly better in regard since a larger farm can easily make use of its big financial resources to conduct research in its 
laboratory. So, they are when the scale of production is small, the producer generally cannot afford a packing department. Therefore, he has to depend on others for obtaining packing material like boxes, tables, etc. But in long run, the production economy is fine. And then this packing the production sector in, in large, the farm can set up its own packing department which is economical and also leads to lower per unit getting cost. Then selling or marketing economics. Every producer produces with, with the purpose of selling. Therefore, he has to infer some expenditure in making his goods available to the consumer. When the scale of production is large, the per unit expenditure of the producer on marketing of goods is reduced substantially due to a number of regions. All farms advertise their products in a number of ways. Even very small farms have to spend a certain minimum amount on advertising, though this expenditure of the small farms is considerably less than the expenditure of the large farms. So, when the scale of production is large, the farm can economy on the expenditure on salesmen, agents, extra. The large farms can also enter into such contracts with the wholesalers and distributors that they take more interest in selling the products of the farm so that a small farm is but the small farm cannot for this type of benefits then managerial economics managerial costs are partially for production cost and partially selling cost so managerial economies are obtained on account of the following two basic reasons first Benefits of specialization in the field of management can be obtained only when the scale of operation is considerably large. When the scale of production is small, all manager responsibility regarding production, marketing, finance, extra will have to be borne by one person only. But the but when the operation is large. Separate managers are appointed to look after these tasks. This reduces the level and quality of management. At the same time, cost does not increase in proportion to the increase in the scale of operation. Large firms are in a position to use a number of machines for purpose of management. The use of computers, telephones, text, these are some examples, and which are sufficiently used by the large firms. So, the in real internal economies of scale is increased by production economies, sales or marketing economies, and managerial economies. Then, economies in transport and storage. When the scale of production expands, economies in transport and storage equal to the farm. But small farms have usually to depend on public transport, and therefore their per unit transport cost is higher. But as the scale of operation expands, the farm can purchase its own drug, lorry, extra. This will reduce the, reduce the per unit transport cost for the farm. If the scale of operation expands still further, the farm can go in for larger trucks and lorries. So that on, then when the farm purchases raw materials, loading cost is a part of its production cost. But in the case of large farms, it is going to their part. When finished goods are transported to the market, it is a part of selling and marketing cost. So that the transport cost is transport cost is less to the large farms. So that like transport storage costs are also partly production cost and partly selling and marketing cost. Expenditure on storing the raw material is a production cost, where the expenditure on finished and semi-finished goods is a part of marketing cost. From the point of view on the size of the finished size of the farm, an important thing to remember is that larger the size of the warehouse, larger will be the economic equivalent to the farm. So that inter real internal economy is derived when farm is expanded.
then internal diseconomic of scale if the scale of production is continuously expanded is it possible that after a certain point increase in production is less than proportion then in in the factors of production so many economists believe that such a situation can arise if production is pushed beyond the point of optimal scale and this is the reasons that why this is why this situation is come first limitation on the availability of factors of production the factors of production are always available in limited supply at the place of production that means it is scarce resources when the scale of production is increased beyond a certain point it no longer remains possible to meet the requirement of some factors from local sources so that factors have to be transported from other regions this because of this this they are they are at higher prices higher at higher prices at that time the availability of factors of production can and can also affect the farm's expense or it control the farm's expense it at the scale of production expand it will become more and more difficult to get even the labor from local sources and after a certain point workers will have to be attracted from other regions by offering them higher wages at that time also the producer give them higher wages then problems in management when the scale of production is very large the task of management at the top level becomes increasingly more and more burdensome and some inefficiency is bound to creep in at times of at times information vital from taking a decision should not reach the top managers of the company in time the this delay is to a delay in decision making and increases the part in its cost then technical factors when the scale of production is expanded par unit cost increases due to number of technical regions the establishment cost of large and sophisticated plants and machinery generally high the buildings of large factories should also have stronger foundation and the factory itself must be equipped with coolers air coolers extra all these factors lead to an increase in per unit cost then external economics external economics are described by alfred marshall according to him when a farm enters production it options a number of economies for which the farm's own production strategy managerial arrangements are not responsible in fact these are economic external, external to the farm for example let us suppose that a farm is established at a place where transport advertising facilities extra are not available if the size of the farm remains small it is possible that these facilities are not locally available in the future as well but if the size of the farm increases significantly these facilities will themselves start coming to the farm these are in fact external economy when the farm expands its scale of production other farms also earn many economy for example when a large factory attracts various sectors production fairly regularly many other factors set up in the neighborhood they could not have attracted these factors on their own or just stand to gain because of external economy of large scale production there is a gap between private and social returns when a farm expands its scale of production it becomes possible for the other farms to reduce their cost of production then external discipline when the scale of operation is expanded many such it is economies emerge that have no particular deal effect on the farm itself their burden falls on the other farms like they are turn external diction the smoke rising from the chimney of a factory pollutes the atmosphere when the farm is of a small size the pollution is less and its ill effects on the people living in colony near by the limited but if the scale but if the scale of the farm is large the smoke will be very dense and can cause serious health hazards to the people similarly at the scale of production of the factory increases employment rises sharply this creates problems of traffic 
congestion and overcrowding in the city where these factories are located. In agriculture, increase in the scale of production leads to the problem of soil erosion, and this reduces the fertility of of adjoining fields as well. So the the economics and the the external internal economy and external economy or internal diseconomy and external diseconomy are happen when the farm is large and when the farm expands that time these things are arise and if we at our attention on the both economy this economy of scale both internal and external as well as economies are beneficial for the society or country these economies are also hazard to the country social society and country then co the cost of production has the harm a harm regarding production of a good depends on two factors the demand for the good and the cost of production of the good the concept of cost of production is basic to the understanding that the price theory and requires a theory and theory the farm is interested in minimizing hard economics called the private cost the concept of social cost that is being often referred to in the context of social welfare so that here the concept of the cost is very important private cost and social cost the concept of both private cost and social cost are used in the microeconomic theory the farm in its attempt to attain the goal of profit maximization maximization is guided entirely by the private cost in it is in its decision making it is ignores all these cost which it may be imposing on other while carrying out its production program in welfare study together with the farms work explicit and implicit cost are taken but private cost Every farm requires a various inputs to produce a good. So, the amount of money to spend pay, so paid is known the cost. Economists, however, include in the private cost not only the expenditure incurred incurred by the producer on purchasing of factors of production from the market, but also the imputed cost of all those services which the producer himself provides. the private cost of production of any output may thus be defined as either the purchase or the imputed value of all productive services used in the product say producing the output and is equivalent to the total money sacrifice of the farm that to secure it generally economists include the following expenditures cost of the raw materials wages of the laborers interest payments on capital loans rent of the land and the buildings repairing cost of the machines and de depreciation tax payments to the government and local bodies then imported wage payment to the producer for the work performed by the him him then imputed interest payments for the capital invested by the invested by the producer himself and rent of land and buildings owned by the producer himself and normal profit of the farm then social cost social cost differ from the private cost because of two reasons first externalities are not included in private cost a factory located in the residential area by polluting the atmosphere will expose the residents of the colony to various elements and will thereby raise their medical expenditures so these costs are quite relevant from the point of view of the society they are the part of the social cost secondly market prices of goods may not reflect their social value and that there there may be division between private and social cost the imposition of government taxes subsidies and controls of various kinds of distress free market prices but the prices of factors of production may overstate or understand the opportunity cost of using those factors in heavily populated countries 
where widespread disguised unemployment is to be found in the agriculture sector, the industrial wage of them exceeds the opportunity cost of the labor, such is drawn from the agriculture se sector. These are the these prices for goods are termed social prices. Then money cost. Money cost. The money cost of the production of any output is considered to be equivalent to the total monetary sacrifice made to obtain that output. That means this concept of cost is not very relevant since economists wish to study is how cost affects output based employment decisions. Cost can be classified, this money cost is classified as ex explicit cost and implicit cost. Ex Explicit cost arises from transactions between the farm and other parties in which the farmer purchases inputs or services of inputs for carrying out the production. These costs are usually the costs shown in the accounting statement and include pay wage payments, raw materials costs, interest on loans, payments for insurance, electricity, and so on. But implicit costs are the costs associated with the use of the farm's own resources. Since these resources will bring return if employed elsewhere, their imputed values constitute the implicit cost. Implicit costs are, however, difficult to measure. Then real cost. The, the concept of the real cost based on subjective belief and cannot be used for precise measurement in production cost. It is this reason why modern economists do not consider it to be a to be much in the price theory. Therefore, it has a heavy real cost. In the real cost of simple and less address work is generally low. Modern economists regard the concept of real cost as inappropriate. Then sums cost and incremental cost. In economics and business decision making, a sum cost is cost that has already been incurred and cannot be recovered. Some costs are sometimes constructed, contrasted with prospective costs, which are future costs that may be incurred or changed if an action is taken. In microeconomic theory, only prospective Costs are relevant for decision making since some, some costs can have already been incurred and cannot be recovered. An incremental cost is the increase in total cost resulting from an increase in the production or the activity. Then, economic cost and accounting cost. Accounting accounts are considered with the firm's financial statement and tend to take a retrospective look at the firm's finances because they have to keep track of assets and liabilities. Accounting costs include depreciation expense for capital equipment at rates allowed by the tax authorities. There is difference regarding the treatment of explicit and implicit costs as well. The economists and the accountants consider it explicit costs because these involve direct payments by a company to other firms and individuals that is do not business with. While economists also take into account the implicit cost, accountants ignore them. These economic the treatment of this depreciation is also different when estimating the future profitability of a business. An economist is concerned with the capital cost of plant and machinery. But the explicit cost of buying and, and the running of the machinery, but does not cost in associated with the wear and tear. Accounts, accountants use depreciation rates on different assets as allowed under the tax laws in their cost and profit calculations. So that these depreciation rates did not reflect the actual wear and tear of the equipment, which is likely to vary asset by asset. So, in the income statement, so the flow of sales and sales cost and revenue of the 
over year of or accounting year it measures the flow of money into and out of the farm over a specified period of time then the balance sheet indicates an in instantaneous financial picture a snapshot it is like a measure of the stock of water in a lake the major life items are assets liabilities and net worth this is accounting support and economic support direct payment cost then cost function short run and long run the relation the terms in the economists regard the period of time a short run in which factors of production are fixed and the firm depends only on the variable factors of production to increase the level of output if the firm does not employ the variable factors at all the output will be zero in the short run however the maximum quantity of output that can be produced depends upon the quantity of the fixed factors of production in the long run all factors are variable and the quantity of the output can be increased to any limit in in a manufacturing industry the plants machinery building of the factory are fixed resources in the short run while the raw material labor power etc are variable therefore to increase the amount of output in this period it will become necessary to employ more units of variable resources in conjunction with the fixed resources so in the long run total cost is a multi variable function which implies that total cost is determined by many factors the long run cost function may be as c equal to function of p t p f c is the total cost of production q is the output t is the technology p f the prices of the relevant factors of production then short run cost function in the short run the the output level technology and factor prices the fixed factors such as capital equipment land etc also determine cost of production therefore the short run cost function is the c equal to function of q t p f and k where k indicates fixed factor it has been stated that in the short run certain factors like capital equipment land factory building and top managerial staff remain constant k this underlines the fact of the constancy of the fixed factors since the amount of fixed factor does not change in the short run under any atmosphere k this is not the shift factor like technology and factor prices then fixed factor fixed fixed cost fixed cost is also known as supplementary cost while engaging in productive activity the producer always to incur some expenditure which remains fixed whatever the level of production so much so that even if the producer stops production all together these costs have to be incurred so fixed cost is fixed in manner in short run because if there is no production because of that the fixed cost is arises then variable cost the cost which keeps on changing with the changes in the quantity of output produced is known as variable cost raw material has to be used in the process of production in the manufacturing industry that is a variable cost then in the then total fixed cost total fixed cost is the total expenditure by the firm on fixed in cost it in the short run total fixed cost is is horizontal line which is parallel to o x axis even when the firm stops a production altogether implying that output is at zero level the total fixed cost remains unchanged then total variable cost total variable cost is firm total expenditure on variable inputs is to carry out production the higher 
at the time the total variable cost of the farm increases as egg its output increases when the farm stops its production altogether it does not require any variable inputs therefore its total variable cost is zero and it is dropping upward to the right then total cost total cost is the sum of the total fixed cost and total variable cost and its then short run cost curves average fixed cost all those hand such total cost of production increased in a significant proportion of fixed cost try to increase the level of production to such an extent that per unit fixed cost which is often known as average fixed cost is reduced substantially so that average fixed cost equal to total fixed cost divided by q or a f is the average fixed cost t f is the total fixed cost and q is the output when total fixed cost is divided by total quantity of quantity of output we find the we get the average fixed cost and average fixed cost curve is sloping up sloping down to the right and it is convex to the origin that means the total, the average fixed cost curve is a rectangular hyperbola because multiplication of average fixed cost with the quantity of output produced always gives a fixed value then average variable cost average variable cost is got we divide the total variable cost by the output that means ab is equal to kpc by q the average variable cost gives us the same information money terms that we obtain from the average product curve of the variable factor in physical terms then average total cost average total cost is also known as average cost we divide total cost by the output we got the average total cost ac equal to tc by q T C equal to T F C plus T E F by Q. So the average cost declines initially. The reason is that with increasing returns in the initial stage, average cost declines initially because some of the resources are indivisible and there are possibilities of specialization in the production process. As long as the individual Individual factors are not fully utilized. The average total cost falls, and when the expansion in output leads to a stage where the individual resources are fully utilized, an optimum proportion is established between the factors of production. And output obtained at this point is the optimal output. Hence, the average total cost is minimum, so that average total cost. Initially, then marginal cost. The marginal cost is the increase in the total cost or the small increase of the output, or MC equal to delta T C by delta Q. Delta C C T C equal to change total change in total cost with associated with a small change in output. Delta T B C is the change in the total variable variable cost. Associated with a small change in output, delta Q is the small change in output. The marginal cost curve is it will be Q set. This implies that the marginal cost curve MC first slopes downwards and then at the point where marginal cost is minimum, it starts sloping upward because marginal cost after decreasing with increases in output at low. Output levels increases with further increases in output. The shape of marginal cost curve is, in fact, attributed to the law of variable proportion. The MC curve reaches its next minimum point before the ATC and the ABC. Curves reach the minimum point. So, in the MC MC curve rises, it cuts the ABC curve and ATC curves at their minimum points.
written long run postcards long run in long run all factors are variable due to the absence of fixed factors in the production function all cost of production are variable in the long run and therefore there is no need to distinguish between fixed and variable cost so that in the long run all curves are u shape and in the in long run in economics we say that, that in long run average cost curve envelops the short run average total cost curve that means a, a long run cost curve is created with the help of the short run average cost curve the the summation of the three a summation of the short run curve we get the long run curve when an expansion in scale leads to decreasing or diminishing returns to scale it will be the interest of the farm to reduce the level of production so that in the long run cost is decreasing the efficiency of the variable resources will improve and per unit production cost will decline decline from in the short run the level of efficiency cannot improve further because this is the optimum level of production that can be achieved with the help of the plant available to farm if the farm uses a plant of a larger size it will benefit from the increasing returns they would that become available as a result the per unit cost will fall and come down to a certain level so the full capacity of the plant will not be fully utilized even then it would more efficient as compared to the earlier plant so that the long run optimum for long run garbage plant is relatively small it produces output much larger than then in technological optimum yet the cost remains low because it becomes possible to reduce the dependence of a, a large plant so we finished all the chapters so today we can complete all 133 chapter 131 microeconomics and bye